I am so glad you're here. Today we're going to be talking about the different conformations that cyclohexane can produce. For example, a chair conformation or a boat conformation. In addition to learning how to draw these conformations, we're going to learn about things called axial and equatorial positions, comparing the stability of different conformations, and make sure you stick around to the end because I have some practice problems that should help for your next exam. Let's start with a chair conformation and how to draw them. I would encourage you to try this out on your own pen and paper as well. We'll start by drawing in a very wide V. So for example, a very wide V, which looks like this. Next, we'll draw in a line from this point at about 60 degrees that ends just before the middle or the vertex of this V. Next, we'll draw in a line from here, from this point, that goes up and ends just before the terminal point of this other line. Then we'll take this point and draw another line about 60 degrees down. And at this point, we just need to connect the last two points and this is a reasonable chair conformation. With practice, you'll get faster at drawing them. So for example, when I draw them, it takes me about this much time. Remember that in cyclohexane, each carbon can be bound to two hydrogen atoms. These carbon atoms are present in what is known as the axial positions or the equatorial positions. And that is true for every one of the carbon-hydrogen bonds in cyclohexane. The axial position always has a vertical line. So if you notice, this is an axial position which has a vertical line. Similarly, at the bottom, this one is also the axial position because it has a vertical line going up and down. The same is true for this position, this position, this position as well. All of those are axial. The other group is said to occupy the equatorial position. And notice that for each of these, they do not go vertical, but instead they contain some angle to them. So all of these are equatorial positions that go slightly to the side. And the last one is right here, which you'll notice is pointing in an angle in this direction, as opposed to being perfectly vertical. Now importantly, they don't have to be just carbon and hydrogen bonds. So for example, we could have a fully substituted cyclohexane that contains methyl groups at each carbon position. So let's start with all the axial positions. Remember the axial is going to be going in the up and down direction. So that is an axial position. This would be another axial methyl. This would be an axial methyl. This would also be an axial methyl, and this one going straight down would also be an axial methyl, and then the last one is going to be at this point. And notice that all of those axial positions are going perfectly up and down. Now, if we want to go in and draw methyl groups at the equatorial position, remember those go to the side. So all of these are going to be our equatorial positions. All of these are equatorial here we have an equatorial methyl group, here we would have an equatorial methyl group, and then here we would have an equatorial methyl group. Now remember, in our last video, which you can view here, we covered Newman projections. And we can again use Newman projections to predict the relative stability of these molecules to see when atoms or clouds of electrons might overlap and repel each other, causing some steric strain. For example, if we were to look down the bonds, which are right here, and right here, we can draw Newman projections at those positions. Here are the Newman projections for both the chair conformation and the boat conformation of cyclohexane. Notice that we can identify the axial positions because they're the hydrogens that go up and down. So this is an axial position, this is an axial position. Similarly, this is an axial position, and this is an axial position. We can also identify the equatorial positions because if you notice, they're still going up into the side or down into the side. So the same is true in the Newman projection as well as for the chair or boat conformation. And notice that in the boat conformation, there's an overlap here, which causes some steric hindrance. And that is showcased in the Newman projections, where all of these are overlapping and thus repelling each other. Whereas in the chair conformation, there is a gauche conformation, which would allow for some stability or a lower energy conformation. So for that reason, cyclohexane's most stable conformation is actually in this chair conformation. There are actually two different chair conformations that rapidly interchange via a pathway that can pass through many different conformations, including a high-energy half-chair conformation, as well as a twist boat and boat conformations. This is illustrated in the figure on the screen, which is an energy diagram summarizing the relative energy levels of the various conformations of cyclohexane. We can use chair conformations to predict the relative stability of a molecule. On the screen are two cyclohexane rings, which are substituted with a single tert-butyl group. So this is a tert-butyl group. Notice that in this chair conformation, the tert-butyl group is in the axial position, but in this tert-butyl group, it is in the equatorial position. Remember that groups of atoms can be thought of as an electron cloud, where there are electrons that are constantly moving around within this space. In the axial position, 
This tert butyl group is potentially coming into contact with the other electron clouds of the hydrogen atoms that are also in the axial position. However, notice that in the equatorial position, there is only one hydrogen that can come anywhere near the electron cloud of the tert butyl group. So for this reason, at equilibrium, it's largely found in the equatorial position because this is a more stable conformation where the larger substituent is placed in the equatorial position. Let's consider a cyclohexane ring, which is substituted with two different substituents, chlorine and a methyl group. Now the way that this structure is drawn is that chlorine has a wedge indicating that it's coming out at you in the screen, and methyl group has a dashed line indicating that it's going in the opposite direction or back into the screen. We need to maintain this trans configuration where they're going in opposite directions. So in the case of a chair conformation, we would draw one of these substituents going up and one of the substituents going down. And we can show this by drawing our chair conformation and placing one of the substituents in the upward direction, like this, and one of the substituents going in the opposite direction, just like this. Now, if this structure were to do a ring flip, what would happen is that almost everything would be inverted. So what we would end up with is a structure that looks just like this. So notice that there has been a flip or a transition from one chair conformation to another. And what has happened is that this carbon, which I'll label A, has now become this carbon A. And the carbon which had the methyl group, which is B, has now become this carbon, which is now labeled B. Now importantly, when this chair flip happens from one chair conformation to the other, the orientation of the substituents remains the same. Remember in this case we drew the chlorine up and the methyl down, so the same will be true on this side, where we'll need to draw the chlorine in the upwards direction and we will need to draw the methyl group going in the downwards direction. Let's consider another example where we have a cyclohexane that is substituted at two positions, one with an ethyl group and one with a methyl group. In this case, there is a carbon that separates them. Notice that also in this case, both of these are drawn with dashed lines indicate that they're going down. So in this case, we can draw an ethyl group going in the downwards position at this carbon, so this would be carbon A. So that carbon A is located here, which means B is here, and then C is this other methyl group. So therefore, this would be carbon B, and carbon C would be located here. Now importantly, both these dashed lines indicate that both of the substituents are going in the downwards direction. So in this case, the carbon identified as C contains that methyl group going in the downward direction, because at the axial position in the upwards direction is a hydrogen, just like at carbon A. Now importantly, when we undergo a chair flip from one orientation to another, we need to keep track of A, B, and C carbons. So carbon A, which had the ethyl group, is now flipped downwards, so this has become A, this carbon is now B, and this carbon is now C. From here, we need to maintain the same orientation. So remember, both the ethyl group and the methyl group were going in the downwards direction. So therefore, this would be the location of the ethyl group. And at carbon C, downwards, we would draw the methyl group as well. And what you should notice here is that this this has created an orientation where these electron clouds are now closer and may potentially come into contact with one another, causing a steric repulsion. Whereas in this chair conformation, even though both substituents are still going down, they're both in the equatorial positions and they're fully separated from one another where their electron clouds cannot come into contact. And for that reason, we would expect that the equilibrium would shift to the left where this would be the most stable structure because again, both of these electron clouds are too far apart to cause any sort of steric repulsion. Now let's try some practice problems to gauge your understanding. Pause the video, try these problems independently, and then resume the video to check my answers. Considering this cyclohexane ring, which has an ethyl group and a methyl group with wedges, meaning that they're going in the same direction, and a chloro group at this position going in the opposite direction, we should start by identifying which direction they're going, up or down, and also which carbon atoms they're actually located on. We can start by counting the carbons, so at carbon 1 is the ethyl group, the carbon 2 is the methyl group, which means carbon 3 is here, 4 is here, and 5 is the location of the chloro group. Importantly, for the ethyl and the methyl groups, they're both going up. Because they contain this wedge, that indicates that they're going both in the upwards direction. Whereas the chloro group has the dashed lines indicate that they should be going in the opposite direction or down. So when we go to draw our chair conformation, we can do so with that same knowledge in mind. We can begin by counting the carbons. So again, this would be position one, this would be position two, position three, position four, and then this makes this position five. Now remember, the ethyl group at one and the methyl group at two are both going in the upwards direction. So we can draw the ethyl group 
right here going in the upwards direction. At the 2 position, we'll draw the methyl group also going in the upwards direction in the equatorial plane. Now at position 5, we see that the chloro group is going down. So this is where we'll place the chlorine going down. Now importantly though, remember that this chair, it's possible that this chair could actually flip and have the orientations completely changed. So we can start by drawing our flipped chair conformation, which we will draw just like this. So all the same rules that you learned previously, just in reverse. And now we can start by identifying the carbons. So carbon one, which was previously at this point, is now located at this position. So this is carbon one, which makes this carbon two, carbon three, carbon four, and now carbon five is at this location. Remember that the orientation of the substituents is maintained even after a chair flip. So even though we have flipped this chair from this orientation to this one, the direction of the substituents would be still maintained. So at position one, we'll place the ethyl group now right here, also still going up. At position two, we'll have the methyl group going in this direction. And at position five, we have the chloro group, which will be going still down just as it was in the previous confirmation. Now we can compare the relative energy of these two chair conformations. In the first conformation on the left, there is one ethyl group in an axial position. The energy associated with an axial ethyl group is about 8 kilojoules per mole. In the second conformation, there are two groups now located in axial positions, a methyl group and a chlorine atom. The total energy associated with these is 7.6 kilojoules per mole plus 2 kilojoules per mole, giving us a total of 9.6 kilojoules per mole. According to this calculation, the energy cost is lower for the conformation with an axial ethyl group, meaning that the conformation on the left is the lower in energy or more stable conformation. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to like it and drop a comment down below if you have any questions at all. Make sure to subscribe to my channel for more chemistry content, and I'll see you in the next video.